Hi, my name is Uhuru Mufukeng and welcome to the South African Book Review Session, your online political book club where everything political literature is evascuated, vivisected and dissected. Hope you enjoy the journey with me. Today we'll be discussing a South African book. It's part of, it's basically right now, it's one of the best sellers in the country. It is a book written by a young South African, a female and black. It is titled The Rise and the Fall of the ANC Youth League. Ribonita was the author and Ribonita was a member of the African National Congress. She was part of the national task team that was appointed to deliver Congress some time back, I think in 2013. And she was before that a member of the Regional Executive Committee of Twani. She writes this book and it's a beautiful book. I'll be explaining to you how I rank this book out of 10 just before the video ends. But it's a very intriguing book with its highs and lows, ebbs and flows, but very good to read. Now, you'd be asking yourself, why is it important to be discussing or reading about the ANC in 2020? Yeah, look at what's going on. Look at the ANC and look at the state it finds itself in. Look at how it's failing to find relevance among young people. Look at how it's failing to react to issues. Look at how it's failing to adapt. That is basically because of the absence of the ANC Youth League. Look at how it's so irrelevant amongst young people. That is because of the absence of the ANC Youth League. So we need to study that and understand that when we see the ANC Youth League, the ANC doing some other things, the impact of sacrificing the ANC Youth League in whatever altar has costed daily. Secondly, the development advancement of the ANC Youth League is part of the South African history. It's part of the South African fabric. The rise of the ANC Youth League had the impact on the South African society and, 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 and history and its future by then. So even the fall of the ANC Youth League has an impact on the South African youth, the South African society and subsequent future. So it is very, very crucial for us to be discussing the ANC Youth League. It is more crucial that this book should have a good ranking because and should be highly recommended if it will be recommended we will see that by the end of the video before the video ends also i'll be having i'll have something to tell you giveaways i will be having giveaways stay tuned just before the video ends we'll tell you what we'll be giving away and how much in what quantities now getting into the book the book speaks of the development and the advancement the metaf the metaphorsis of the ANC Youth League. It starts at the formation. It says the ANC Youth League was a brainchild of young activists of the ANC during those days. In the early 40s, it identifies people like Dr. Nkomo. It identifies Dr. Majumbosi, uh, Walter Sisulu, uh, Oliver Tambo, uh, Nelson Mandela, AP Mda, and 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 President Anton Lambete as well, and says the idea came through those gentlemen in Walter Sisulu's house. They engaged about it, the fund consensus, and decided, no, listen, let's take this idea and engage the president of the ANC about it. Like, how would he feel? They went and engaged the president of the ANC. The president gave gave it a thumbs up. It went to conference. Nineteen forty three, the ANC took a resolution that it will. It must form an ANC Youth League. 1944 came, 10 September, the ANC Youth League was formed. So basically, this that is the starting point of the book. It speaks of the qualities and the type of caliber of leadership that existence that existed amongst the founding forefathers. It speaks of the impact they had on the ANC. It speaks of the intellectual capacity and the intellectual prowess. They, 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 they possess. It speaks of the political astute maneuvers and tactics they deployed. Sometimes not so astute, but most of the times they had very astute political mechanisms deployed in place to advance whatever agenda they had at the particular time. One interesting part of this is the 1949 uh, program of action. The ANC Youth League, after it got, after it got after it was formed it came up it came up with the program of action 1949 program of action saying that is a tool that it believed black people under the leadership 
of the African National Congress should advance as a way of um, defying or as a way of, 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 of asserting themselves as human beings and to, to the apartheid state. This guy came up with this program. It spoke of defiance. It spoke of boycott. It spoke of stayaways. It was by far the most radical approach to the apartheid racist laws which were there at the time. Ever since the formation of the union in 1910 going forward, it was the first time something as radical as this came about. And funny, it, it was young people who drafted this themselves agreed amongst this uh, amongst themselves and carried this forward they went and engaged again they went to dr dr kuma just like they went before they formed like dr kuma this is our program of action of 1949 we'd like you to support it and if you support it we'd make sure you get re-elected as president but then dr kuma refused like ah, guys you can't no you can't i'm owned i'm owned you don't tell me those things i'm president here you know, he told them those things and he actually says, according, according to one other book, that he was felt undermined by these young guys. Well, no, chaps, man, you can't tell me. You can't tell me. Like, no, no, no. Like, no, it's duress. You're putting me under duress. He complained about it. And then these guys decided, no, listen, Dr. Tuma is not going to support our program and we're not going to support him. They didn't support him. Instead, they went and looked for another chap who was not even a member of the African National Congress at the stage. Apparently, this chap, Dr. James Morocco, only affiliated to the ANC in the venue of, con of, on the, of the conference. Like in the venue, like in the venue, affiliated there. He emerged out of that conference as president. He was president and, 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 now, interesting, this decision was not the best decision ever. Yes, this decision allowed the ANC Youth League to have its members with, incorporated within the National Executive Committee of the ANC. It allowed its own program of action to be, to be policy within the ANC. But then the leader they had adopted, a chief, had serious repercussions for them. In 1952, the, the, the organization decided it's going to embark on a national defiance campaign. The volunteer in chief was the president of the ANC Youth League at the time, Nelson Mandela, at 31 years. They went and did this defiance campaign, and then comrades got arrested in huge numbers. Even the president, the president himself, Chase Morocco, he was arrested. Now, when, when, when comrades, when the, when the trial said he got his own lawyer, he like distanced himself from Congress, like no, no, my he got his own lawyer. And that's when the ANC would like realize, well, no, my dear, we have a fifth column as president. And eventually history tells us that they uh in the next conference was ousted by um in course, so Albert Lutul, who hailed from Deben, was a bit more matured, joined politics also quite late in his uh, quite late in his late forties, early fifties, but very respectable very respectable and and he became president uh oliver tambo became his deputy now that was the anc youth league's victory again because lutuli was 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 yes a bit old-fashioned a bit old-fashioned but he was more open to defiance he was very defiant by the way he 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 he, he forfeited his position as chief just for to participate in politics just to participate in politics so that's how much of a of he was very capable of being defined so he resonated somehow to a particular extent with this young man of the anc youth league and that particular leadership assisted assisted the anc in fighting the racist state now this book also speak about very importantly the gap if if you grew up in the anc in the structures of the movement, you would know that the ANC was banned in the 60s, in the early 60s, in 60s actually. And then, I think it was 8 June 1960, the ANC was banned, 8 June 1960. And it was unbanned, I think, in, on the 2nd of February, 1990, if I'm not mistaken. So, we usually don't know who the leaders of the ANC, how about the state of the ANC Youth League during that particular stage of exile, during that 20, 
six or 28 years of exile. We know very, very, during that period of 30 years or so, we know very little about the ANC. Did it continue to exist? Did it die? Did it? But then this book, this book, comrades, it assists us in, in actually developing an, an, an understanding of what happened in the ANC Youth League during the days of exile. Now, the book tells us that in the mid, in, in, in the 60s, three young, uh, three young people, Tabum Begi and the Pahad and the Pahad brothers, Aziz Pahad and Esop Pahad, came with the idea of an ANC Youth and Student Section. They went and approached Oliver Tambo about starting an ANC youth and student section abroad. And Oliver Tambo agreed to the idea. Not only did Oliver Tambo agree to the idea, but he made sure that the idea of the ANC youth and student se section find, uh, find, finds expression and momentum within the camps of the ANC in exile, in Somafco in Tanzania, in, in Angola, in, in Lusaka, it made sure that in, 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 in places like Botswana even, it made sure that it had presence. Now, the first leader, first person to be recognized as leadership before even conference at who was had that status, that ordination was ordained by Tambo to lead the, Afri the African National Congress Youth and Student Section was Johnny Makatin. We know so because in one of these international global conference of young people, those well Youth Federation, Democratic youth there. Tawon Peggy came with his British branch. You already know we are here, we are in charge, we'll offer you leadership. But Johnny came like, no, 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 no. Uh, Tambo instructed me, the President General instructed me that I'm here, I'm in charge of even your delegation. I, everyone who's here, what I'm in charge of, I chose the delegation. It was given, those are powers delegated to me by Tambo. And I'm here going to lead all of you. That's the first person, Johnny McCartin. Uh, this guy's from Britain. We were rather reluctant to let him to let him emerge there as the editor because Johnny apparently was was from that time from the USSR. So he was very leftist. Two leftists. All of them were leftists, but this one was very leftist Stalinist. You understand? So these comrades were like, no, no, no. But then because they had evidence that they was delegated by President General Tambo, Johnny McCartney was the first person to be recognized to lead uh, the whole. Uh, African National Congress Youth Student Section. Though Mbegi did lead in, in, in his parts in, in, in Europe, but then the broader body was led by Johnny Makatin. We also learned that in the first sitting, the first conference that the, uh, the, the, the ANC Youth and Student Section had, was it, it, it was in Morocco, and a leader was elected, a, a comrade Edifundi. Edi Funde. The book tells us that Edi Funde was the per first person to be elected to lead the ANC Youth and Student Section. Uh, after that, we also there was another conference in 1982 that also elected, uh, I think it elected Comrade um, Dwelin Shapo. Comrade Dwelin Shapo was elected in 19... before in 1982. Or, oh, no, 1980, no, 1982 was Cheke but somewhere there, before Chekis Libe was elected in a conference, it was, it was first Willie Lilchap. Willie Lilchap took over from Edi Funde, Edi Funde who took over from Johnny Makatin. Eventually, the last person to lead the ANC youth and student structure in exile, and even during the transition to, to, to the ANC youth league, was a uh, comrade Chekisi Lib. He did not avail himself for the leadership of the ANC Youth League after the unbanning because he believed he was old. He was already 41 years old. He was correct. Now, the book also, that the part of the YSS is my favorite part, as I've said, because it fills in gaps that I've had for so long. It speaks of that part and I'm satisfied. Mm -hmm. Now, while, while that was happening, simultaneously in South Africa, Every township had a youth congress. I'm from a township called Ganyamazan. There was a Ganyamazan youth congress. Neighboring township Pinar had a Pinar youth congress. Kapugwe youth congress. There were so many youth congresses around the townships. Eventually, who subscribed to the ideologies of the United Democratic Front. These structures eventually consolidated themselves to form what we call the South African Youth Congress, 
which was led by Comrade Peter and Comrade Rabu. Uh, these very comrades led that structure up until the unbending of the ANC. After the unbending, the comrades came to Ganyamazan. These youth structures, psycho, the ANC, youth and students action, they all met in Ganyamazan to disband their structures and working towards forming the ANC Youth League, which was launched later there in, in Gwandebele, right here in Pumalang, where Comrade Peter and Comrade Rapu emerged. Now, it speaks of the politicals and the factions, how the ones from the YSS refused to emerge in that NEC because they had other reservations with Comrade Peter and Comrade Rapp and the way they did things. Now, only one person availed himself through other dubious circumstances. The book explains it. You need to read the book. It's Comrade Tabang Makwet, and he explains thoroughly to the author how he availed himself for the position of NEC, how he didn't know anything, we just allowed to know it. He just he was writing a, a discussion document, was called quickly to the hall, got those like, do you accept or do you decline? He did not know what was going on, he accepted the position. He was the only person from the ANC Youth and Student Section to uh, avail himself for a position in the, for, uh, in the unbanned ANC Youth League. It speaks of how Comrade Peter was a firebrand and how sometimes he'd go against his own leadership but how he'd apologize how he was the darling of the young people how he was was outspoken how he would love to write it spoke of how he invested a lot in the structures of the anc league as far as political education is concerned it spoke of 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 his then deputy president who subsequently sub succeeded him lulu johnson of how he also when lulu was pre comrade lulu was president also invested intensely on uh, on 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 political education and the structures even when you can hear comrade lulu johnson speak you can tell oh, no this man is a fine product you should you should try track lulu comrade lulu johnson listen to his speaking oh hear how oh, go read what he writes you can tell he's a man during his presidency, who took political education very seriously. Now, from Comrade Lulu Johnson, Comrade, we come to Comrade uh, Gigabyte. The book talks about how controversial, uh, how controversial his presidency was. How Comrade David Makura and Comrade Lazichiwa who gave him a tough time. It speaks of how he had a tough time imposing himself as president. Uh, considering how big of of personalities his predecessors were now it spoke but then of how comrade maluse regardless and, and consistently re-emerged in conferences as president i think he emerged in three successive conferences it speaks of the transition from kekaba to mbalula and the conflicts that arose with the mbalula presidency actually this book starts to pin the problems with the Kikaba president, it pins up okay. It says every president had their own problems, but then if you read closely, the Kikaba presidency had problems, but not as the Mbalula presidents. The Mbalula presidents, according to the book, had serious crisis, such that even after he left office and was succeeded by Judas Malima, the problems did not subside instead they escalated and they just got exacerbated and it speaks of how judas malima's presidency was riddled with factions with drama with controversy and so, all, all sorts of things and how much they did try congress to infuse political education but could not invest the same energy as their predecessing structures it speaks of the in of the suspension the expulsion and the subsequent disbandment of the leadership of the 24th NEC, a subject which I am very, very touchy about. I believe it is one of the worst moments of the 53rd NEC of the ANC. According to me, the 53rd NEC of the ANC should stand trial. Young people should make that 53rd, in, we should have made them stand trial in that 54th conference of the ANC. Those guys did not do justice to us. They robbed us a serious future. The author speaks of that and speaks into detail of the outcomes of the particular disbandment, expulsion and suspension of the leadership of the ANC. Speaks of the entity of which the author was part of and speaks of the 
the failure of the ANC to properly guide the process and to fail to empower the entity. It speaks of how they got eventually dissolved, dissolved and, and replaced with another in, a, entity which was actually all people of the ANC, NEC and how they delivered a dubious Congress where a dubious character of Colin Mayine emerged. And it speaks of the outcomes of that obisant and too obedient NEC of the ANC. The 25th NEC of the ANC League was a caricature, was a shadow of what the ANC, of the former self of the ANC Youth League. It was so fearful, it operated in an environment of fear such that it got disbanded. They, they, they were so, they were operated by fear that their fear led to their own collapse. They were disbanded and they were replaced by a, something called the ANC National Youth Task Team, which is led by old people. It's led by old people. It does not resonate with young people. It's interested in functions of the ANC. It will not assist anyone. It's actually... It should that thing should be rejected young people should reject that nytt actually it's not part we don't know that thing i am still young constitutionally i'm still a member of the anc and i'm mot motivating you we should reject the nytt it has nothing nothing to do with the young people it is a tool for old people just to manage and to make themselves feel good that we've got young people those people are not young those are old people the a it speaks then it, 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 the author speaks very 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 passionately about the failure of the ANC Youth League to involve itself in the 2015 hashtag FISMAS fall struggle. And we all saw that struggle. I'm a former SRC president myself just a year before the, the, the FISMAS fall started. And knowing the struggles of young blacks of all classes, basically, of all classes, we struggle a lot when it comes to payment of fees. We struggle a lot. We have so many of us who have, who have dropped out, so many of us who could not finish our studies, so many of us got uh, criminal records from those pro The ANC Youth League was nowhere. It was nowhere to offer leadership. It was nowhere to offer guidance. It, that was the footnote of the ANC Youth League's death. And it died a very painful and unnatural death. It was actually sacrificed on whatever altar. And for me, I believe it was sacrificed on the altar of profit. And the altar of self-gratification. And the altar of... It, it was just because of self-saving interest that the ANC Youth League was destroyed. It is not a mistake that the ANC Youth League died. The ANC Youth League was killed and the people who should be held accountable is Jacob Zuma as, as accused number one, uh, Cyril Ramaphosa, accused number two, Gwede Mantashe, accused number three, and the rest of JC Duarte, accused number four, and everyone who served in that 53rd ANC who took that decision to expand, expel, suspend and, 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 and actually disband our leadership and leave the ANC Youth League as a caricature, a cartoon-like thing that we see today. Those are people who should be charged with treason because they did that not to benefit the movement, not to benefit the revolution, not to fight against poverty, hunger and unemployment, not to fight any, any, uh, any social, any societal ill, but instead to perpetrate them so that they can steal in peace without being bothered, so that they can extend their political basis without being bothered, so that they can use young people who aspire to be in leadership positions to be conveyor belts of their ill-conceived interest. So this book, this book is a fantastic book. It's a good book. I would give it a total of 7 out of 10. I would not give it a total because I'd be biased because I'm a member of the ANC Youth League. I relate to every single sentence written to this book. I actually would like to urge every young activist of any political organization to buy this book and learn and to protect what is yours. Had young people of the ANC protected this and 
stood for it, though the heavens may fall, the fate of young South Africans would be different. Even the complexion of our country would be different. But then we have failed ourselves. We have failed. The ANC, the 24th MEC, spoke of the nationalization of land, the nationalization of land, banks, and mines. It spoke of things that made capital uncomfortable and capital retaliated through our own comrades in the ANC. Unfortunately, this book speaks about those particular episodes. We need to know those things so we can give a proper account of history. This is a good installment of history. This is a challenge to other comrades who may not, who are, who may not yet be won over by the contents of the book. To those whose confidence this book is yet to win, I think we should read it. And, and, and engage the author. Let's engage on the book. The aim of the book is not that to present itself as a paragon of wisdom, as a paragon of correctness, I'm definitely sure. But then it's to spark a discussion. It's written by our own, understands our history, our language, our principle, our principles and value system. It's very, very intriguing. I recommend it. Guys, to those lucky 10 subscribers, I'll be giving away this book to support the Riboni and to ensure the and to be grateful to all of you who'd be subscribing to my channel. This is a book I highly recommend and I give it a 7 out of 10. Thank you for being with me. It was nice reviewing the rise and fall of the ANC Utlik. Till next time.